this video, we'll be making a percussive FM bass. Um, so like we had done before, first thing I want to do is increase the velocity a little bit, just so that my keyboard isn't quite so sensitive. And we're going to insert a basic oscillator. Click on the FM tab. Now we can tell, yeah, see the waveform there is actually the sawtooth. So we need to go back, back to the oscillator. And we're going to change the waveform to a sine wave. That'll serve us a little better for this example, a little bit smoother. So what we want to play with here is the amount of the modulation. I'm not going to go into a great detail uh, about FM and how it works, just to know that this knob is going to give us that aggressive sound that we're looking for right at the attack. So we're going to click on it. And we're going to add a modulator. In this case, we're going to uh, assign an envelope to it. What we're trying to do here is get that knob to go from a uh, almost a full position down to a zero position pretty quick to give us a very aggressive attack. I need to increase my, my modulator depth so that, it'll, so that it'll come in. There we go. And that's the effect of moving that amount knob from full to zero very quickly. It's a little bit slower. That's where we're adjusting the period. You can see there, there's, there's sounds there that we could almost go in a different direction. But for now, we just want that snappy, snappy attack. Now we want to put an envelope on the volume control. So we'll click on it, select it. We'll add a modulator. In this case, it will be a, an ADSR envelope. This is going to give us the body of the sound. Or is that that attack, that percussive attack, disappears very quickly, and now we're left with the remaining part of the note. So adjust the period, the period to try to just for the length that we want for that the body of the note to ring out. We'll close that. All right, so now I'm going to do a little bit of house cleaning. I'm going to pull that volume to the top. It just helps me keep organized if I have a lot of different oscillators going on. Now we want to click on the little dot for the envelope modulator. And what we're going to do here is add another modulator to modulate that modulator. And we're going to select note velocity. And this is going to basically give strength to that modulator, depending on how hard we hit the keys for those folks that are actually playing keyboards. Obviously, you guys that, that uh, program on the piano roll, you know, you, you know what you're doing there as far as program, programming your velocities in. So there, that gives us a little bit of um, dynamics to our playing. So now I want to add a sub-oscillator, one octave below. And I can do that using the detune function here with this, the same oscillator.
Here you can see we have two voices, and we can select them with this dial here, voice one and voice two. And they have different parameters uh, for each, and volume and pan, and a chorus, of course. So the first thing we're gonna do is turn the detune amount to zero. And on voice number one, we're gonna center that, we're gonna turn the chorus off, and go to voice two, and we're gonna tune it down uh, 12 semitones. It gives us one octave below. Turn off the chorus. Because really all we're looking for here is the note, not any type of effect. So we're gonna get rid of all the, the things that actually spread or detune it. and the set it to note so that both waves are triggering exactly the same time in phase with each other. Then voice two will do the will do the same thing. We'll set the pan to center. And then we will be able to use this volume to to blend it in where we want it. That's about good. We'll close that. Now we'll add a filter. In this case, I'll select Cascade. Use our line to tie the filter in there. Turn up the resonance just a little bit because this again is going to work for us on the attack section. We're going to turn the key tracking all the way up so that each, regardless of the note that we play, it has the same resonance on that note. And we want to modulate the cutoff frequency, so we're going to select it, add a modulator, go up here, and in this case we're going to select note velocity. Because again we want to be able to have that cutoff frequency be modulated depending on how hard we press the keys. Just to add dynamics that goes along with the, the FM amount that we used earlier. And this just kind of takes some playing around with it, just depending on your keyboard and your touch and your feel, but just kind of Close that. Now we'll insert a chorus. Since we used our detune to give us a sub oscillator, so now we'll put a chorus in. So I'm going to select the speed and add a modulator. In this case, we're going to select the front panel controls and the first one here. The X, that will give us the one on the left. We'll select bipolar. That allows it to go both directions, positive and negative. And we'll set that dial to the middle. That way, when we go to move the control, it will give us full range. And I'll show you that here.
So on the x-axis from left to right, left we have no speed, and on the right we have full speed. Does nothing moving it up and down yet. Just left to right. Let's go back to the course, and this time we'll select the mix and uh, add a modulator, and we'll select the y-axis of the same XY pad. Again, set it to bipolar. Give it full range. Set the dial in the middle so that it goes full positive, full negative. And this time when we move it up, it brings the mix in. So left to right increases the speed. Up and down increases the mix amount. And we'll do the same thing with the filter. We can select the cutoff frequency again and add a, an additional modulator to it. This time we'll select the second uh, front panel XY pad. This is a little bit different. We'll select it to bipolar, but um, we're gonna have to play around with this a little bit as far as the, the actual amount because the cutoff frequency tends to cut the volume completely out, as you see here. We don't really want that. So we may have to increase the cutoff a little bit and decrease the modulation amount. We're trying to find a balance to where we have full range of our control and still have full audible range as well. So I may have to turn that down a little bit. Still choking it out. So I'm gonna go raise my cutoff frequency again. And now you can see we can we can dial in what we want. Nothing up and down yet. We'll assign that to the release. Or I mean excuse me, the resonance. Actually hit that by mistake. Now we cut that off. There we go. Now we'll select the resonance and give it to the Y axis. So then we'll have control over our cut off and our resonance using that 1xy pad. I don't typically turn the modulation full on the resonance because I don't usually want my resonance full in this case. You can hear the resonance spike out. That gives us some ability to control our tone. And that's our percussive FM bass.